God is walking beside you. Mm -hmm. God stays beside you through it all. The Bible tells us in Psalm chapter 30, 138, verse 7. Psalm 138, verse 7. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. So God is walking beside you all of the time. He never leaves your side. So we have to learn to depend on God. We have to learn to uh, uh, trust in God. We have to learn to rely on God's love regardless of whatever is happening around us. Regardless of the difficulty, the challenge, what we are faced with, regardless of all of that, we have to learn to rely on God's promises. We have to learn to rely on God's love, regardless of whatever is happening in our lives, whether we are being evicted, whether we are in a financial difficulty, whether we are going through a divorce, whether we are uh, dealing with Corona, whatever the situation is, whatever the situation is, you have to look. We I put myself in it too. We have to learn to trust God. God has to be louder than the situation in our life. When the situation in our lives become louder than God, that's when problems happen. So God has to always be louder than whatever you are going through in life. So you can be faced with an, ev with an eviction. If you allow that eviction to become louder than God, you will. that's when your problems start. But when, when God is louder than that e eviction, God will, God will lead you through a way to deal with that situation. You see, God's always leading you. But if you allow that thing to become louder, you won't hear the, the voice of God, the guidance of God. That's the only difference. So in any situation, it's very, very important that we focus on Jesus Christ. When we keep our mind focused on Jesus Christ, eh, eh, Remember, what you focus on grows and what you think about, you bring about. So when we allow our minds to be focused on Jesus Christ, it frees our mind. It opens up our mind to see the miracles that God is working in our lives. But when we focus on the storm, it, it, it paralyzes the mind in that storm. So your mind is paralyzed in the storm. So all you can see is a storm. And so... It's very, if you remember in the, uh, in the New Testament, Jesus was walking in water and one of the disciples said, uh, Master, Master, if it is really you, uh, command that I come and walk on water with you. And all Jesus said was come. And so I think it was Peter started walking on water toward uh, 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 Jesus. For as long as Peter was focused on Jesus, he was walking on the water. It didn't matter, matter regard, uh, uh, if the, the, the waves and the hecticness and the winds around Peter didn't matter. You see, the waves and the winds represent the problems in your life. The waves and the winds around Peter didn't matter. You see, the problem was still there. The winds were still there, but the focus was on Jesus. So the miracle was being performed. He was walking on water. He was, be, he, he, he was walking towards Jesus. He was performing the uh, uh, miracle, regardless of the problem still being there. But the second he stopped, he took his focus off of Jesus and put his focus back on the problem, back on the winds, that's when he started to sink. And so whatever your situation is in life today, Whatever your problem keep is, keep your focus on Jesus. Because when you keep your focus on Jesus, just like Peter did, you're, you, you will find yourself that you're walking with Jesus through that problem. Jesus is leading you. How was Jesus leading Peter? Jesus, just by standing there, he was showing Peter this way, this way, this way. So Peter was walking that way. You see, but if Jesus was removed himself, then uh, uh, Peter would have no direction. He would say, what, what, is it that way? Do I walk this way? Do I walk this way? He would have no direction. So when you keep your focus on Jesus in the middle of your storm, that is your direction. And Jesus will, will say to you, calm, calm, so that he's telling you which way to go. The second you take your focus off of Jesus, in your problem, in your eviction, in your divorce, in your financial difficulty, in your health issues. The second you take your focus off of Jesus in your difficulty, in the storm of your life, that is when you're going to lose your direction. That is when you're going to start to sink. You see, 
problems and storms will always be in life here there and everywhere we have one tomorrow we have one next week we have one next year we're always going to be to have winds and storms and problems in life but the thing is are you walking are you in the middle of that storm are you sinking is that storm overwhelming is it overpowering you it, are the are the waters drowning you because you've taken your focus off of jesus or are you in the middle of the storm but you have jesus walking with you as your direction and you're performing the miracle as peter was walking on water you see the choice is always yours when you focus on jesus you free your mind to see the miracle that is actually being performed in your life but when you focus on the storm, that storm actually paralyzes your mind in the storm until all you see is the storm. And then you begin to sink, sink, sink because you say, well, I can't see any way out. Well, the odds are against me when my wall, if my back is up against the wall, you see. And so whatever issue you are going through, keep your focus on Jesus. A mind focused on Jesus is a mind at peace. A mind focused on Jesus is a mind at peace in the middle of the storm. Remember, Jesus was on the boat with his disciples. And again, there were winds and there were waves and hecticness. Again, it represents the troubles, the issues in your, in, in your life. The disciples were all hectic and scared, thinking they were going to drown. What was Jesus doing? He was comfortably sleeping away on the boat. And what's that telling us? Peace in the middle of the storm. Peace in the middle of the storm. You don't have to be awake in that storm and trying to fix everything and try to control everything and try to save yourself and save your life. You don't have to do that. That's what the disciples were doing because they didn't understand better. Don't be one of those people that don't understand better. Be like Jesus. Jesus came to be an example. Why do you think Jesus, why do you think God felt the need to manifest himself on in flesh to walk on earth among us? Why? To be our example among many other things. One of them was to be our example. So we need to follow in the examples in the ways of Jesus. What was Jesus doing in the middle of the storm? He was sleeping. He had peace in the middle of the storm. Why? Because he knew that God, the Father, is working in his life he doesn't need to be hectic trying to control everything because what we do in situations like that is we interfere and we actually mess up the plan god is working in our lives just be still be back you know lean back be still and have faith that god is working things out just keep your focus on jesus and go by the guidance of the holy spirit keep your mind keep your mind eh, 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 focused on jesus a mind focused on jesus is a mind at peace Jesus was sleeping on the boat, which represents peace in the middle of the storm. You don't have to be hectic in your life uh, uh, challenges. Have peace in your life challenges because you trust that Jesus Christ in you is sorting things out. Keep your focus on Jesus. You know, it's easier said than done to keep your focus on Jesus. It is difficult sometimes to keep your focus on Jesus when you're faced with life challenges. But it makes it easier to focus on Jesus. You have to trust in Jesus. If you don't trust Jesus, I tell you, it's going to be very, very, very hard for you to keep your focus on Jesus. When there's a storm in your life, if you don't trust in Jesus, it's very easy for you to shift your mind away from Jesus and back on the problems, how you're going to fix it, who you need to contact, how you need to go about it, how you need to and to try to do everything yourself and then focus on the uh, storm and then drown in the problem and so on and so forth, which is a lot, of, which is the mistake a lot of, of us make. To keep your focus on Jesus, you have to trust in Jesus. Without trusting in Jesus, you're not going to keep your focus on Jesus in the middle of the storm. Without trusting in Jesus, the second the storm appears, you're going to shift your focus on Jesus and how you're going to do it yourself. And focus on how you're going to do it yourself. In order for us to keep our focus on Jesus in the middle of the storm, we have to trust in Jesus. And so... Before you can keep your focus on Jesus, you have to learn to trust in Jesus. It is the trust that leads to the focus on Jesus. Without trusting in Jesus, it will lead to the focus on the storm. Pay attention is very important. It is your trust in Jesus that will help you keep your focus on Jesus in the middle of the storm. 
without trusting in Jesus, that when the storm comes, you will shift your mind away from Jesus onto the storm. And that's when you're going to uh, uh, begin to drown. So in essence, what I'm saying is it is your trust that will in Jesus that will keep you above water. When you're in a problem, the hecticness and the winds and the waves around you, when you're in a problem, if you know deep in your heart that Jesus is the one that's going to get you out of it, you're going to focus on him like eagle eyes, like you've never focused on anything before because you know that's your only way. But if you don't trust in Jesus, then when the storms and the winds come, because you don't trust that he is your only way out, you're, go you're going to start looking for other alternatives. Like Peter did, he was looking around, took his focus of Jesus, and so he began to sink. That's not where you want to be. So it is your trust in Jesus that will lead you to focus on Jesus. Your lack of trust in Jesus will lead you to focus on the storm. And that's when you sink. So the question is, how can we learn to trust in Jesus? The answer is simple. You can only trust in Jesus when you get to know him. Think about it. You can't trust someone that you don't know. You meet someone for the first time. You're not going to trust them with your life. You're not going to trust them with your finances. You're not going to trust them with everything. But once you get to know them, you get to know their character, their personality. You get to know them as an individual. That's when you begin to trust them. And so to trust in Jesus, you have to get to know him. So the next question is, well, how do we get to know Jesus? And the answer is simple. Spend time with him. How did you get to know your friend? By spending time with them. How do you get to know your neighbor? By spending time with them. How did you get to know your husband? By spending time with them. How did you get to know your wife? By spending time with them. So how do you get, do you get to know Jesus? By spending time with him. When you spend time with Jesus, you will start to know his character. You will start to know his faithfulness. You will start to know his love for you. You will start to know the word. When you spend time with Jesus, you will start to know the word. You spend time with Jesus in prayer, in the Holy Bible, fellowship, so on and so forth. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8, the Lord himself goes before you and will be there with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And so do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. And so the more time you spend with Jesus Christ, the more you will get to know him. The more you will get to know, the more time you spend with Jesus Christ, the more you get to know his character, the more you get to know how faithful he is, the more you get to know his word, his love, the more you get to know that he is always with you. He never leaves you nor forsake you regardless of what your situation is. He will never leave your side, whatever your situation is, good or bad, but you will never have this level of trust if you're not spending time with him. The more you spend time with him, the more you will know his heart. And his heart is all about his children, you. And this, this deep, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, this deep, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ begins to fill your mind and your heart of who this character really is, who this person really is, who this God really is. And once you know the power of God, the faithfulness of God, the love of God, the characteristics of God, not only will you trust him to keep your focus on him in all life challenges, but your challenges will begin to look small, poxy, tiny, compared to the mighty, the great I am. You see, the more you will get to know his heart, the more you will begin to know, yeah, he is protecting me. Yes, he does love me. Yes, he never leaves my side. Yes, he does go before me and makes my crooked path straight. Yes. He does live inside me, 
for greater is he who is in me than he who is in this world. In other words, for greater is the Holy Spirit who lives in me than any problem, challenge, person, thing, demon of this world. Can you see how the trust begins to surface? For greater is he who lives in me than that mountain I'm faced with. For greater is he who lives in me than that wave, that wind that Peter was scared of. For greater is he who lives in me than he who lives in this world. You see, sometimes you can't see God, but you can feel him. You can feel his presence. Sometimes you might not be able to see him, but you see his miracle hand working in your life. You see the mighty invisible hand of God, how it moves things out of the way. How it nudges you toward a certain situation. How it closes doors that are no longer good for you. How it opens new doors that are for you. How it moves people out of the way. How it brings new people in your path. Do you have this level of perception? Do you have this level of understanding? This level of understanding will come when you know who God is. The more you spend time with him, the more you will know him. Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. The more you spend time with him, the more you will know his heart, his faithfulness, his love, his character, his word. The more you will know, that was from God. I couldn't do that. Hey, that's God moving over there too. That's, that was definitely God that moved that person out of my life. That door of opportunity definitely came from God. This money sent to me was definitely God that put it up on their heart. Everything is God. But can you see it? Or are you too busy pulling a pita and drowning in the middle of the storm when Jesus was in front of him and he was drowning in the middle of the storm? You see, we no longer need to see Jesus physically in front of us because the Holy Spirit lives in us. Jesus had to ascend before he sent the helper. He, sent, he says, I go and I send you the helper. The Holy Spirit, it's in you, it lives in you. And you see the hand of God working in your life. And then, then what happens is, when you're out of that storm, maybe you're in another season in your life, you look back at that situation, at the storm, and you get to see everything God has done. If you don't believe me, look back and any, any challenging situation that has finished, that has gone, it's done and dusted, and you will see the hand of God. But do you really have to wait to get out of the storm to look back to see the hand of God? Wouldn't you like to see the hand of God in the middle of the storm? Which means you will be like Jesus on the storm, peace in the middle of the storm. Where you will say to the storm, be quiet, peace. Peace in the middle of the storm. 
For he who is in you is greater than he who is in this world. So there were four things here. I don't know if you grasped them in the video, but there were four things. The first thing is you, the first key is that you have to know God. And you know, how do you know God? By spending time with him in prayer, in communion, fellowship, in the word of God, being in his word, in the Holy Bible. You have to first know him. Because only when you know him, you will be able to trust him. Only once you trust him, will you be able to focus on him in the middle of the storm. Only once you can focus on him in the middle of the storm, will you have a peaceful mind in that storm. To see the miracles of God being performed in that storm. A lot of people, they look at their current situation and they think, oh no, and the odds are against me and I'm drowning and my back is up against the wall. And they don't have peace of mind to see the miracles of God in that storm where it could simply be something as simple as God is just closing an old door to open a new door. God is just testing your faith to show you great and mighty things. God is just, just teaching you to depend on him, you see. Because they can't see it from this perspective, because they're not in the Bible, because they don't know God, because they're not trusting him, because they're not focused on him. They, their own mind creates a worst case scenario of, oh, and this is happening, that's so bad and that's so terrible. And sometimes it's just all in your mind. Sometimes a storm is happening. But we have to follow the examples of the Bible. What was Jesus doing in the storm? Sleeping. Why? Are you telling me that where, whenever there's a storm I have to sleep? No, I'm telling you that whenever there is a storm, you have to trust enough to be able to sleep in the middle of the storm. And then there's the example of Peter. When there's a storm and a wind, the first thing people want to do is hide themselves in the boat and protect themselves and hide themselves. Be like Peter. God, if it's you, command me to walk in this storm. And then God will say, come my child. And you have to be like Peter, not hiding away scared. You step out of that boat and you start walking through your storm. You step out of your boat. You, you think your boat is your protection. You create an idol out of your boat. God says, no idols, put, create no idols before me. You step out of that boat. Don't think the boat is your protection. Don't think that boat is going to protect you. You step out of that boat and you put all your trust in God. And you say, God, if it's you, you command me to walk. And you step out of that boat for it cannot protect you. And you put yourself in that storm, in that water. And you walk through it toward the path God is leading you. For he is in front of you and he is saying to you, come my child. Don't hide in that boat. Don't hide behind this person. Don't hide behind your finances. Don't hide behind your boss. Don't hide behind the closed walls. Don't hide. Get out there. Put yourself out there and you say, God, if it's you, command me to come. And God will say, come. And God will tell you to take this path or that path or the other path. And the path God is telling you to take, you take that path. And you walk like you have never walked before. And you keep walking until you reach the destination where Jesus is telling you to go. For he said to Peter, come. And all he wanted was Peter to trust him enough to reach him right here. So he can walk side by side with Jesus. And that's where you want to be. You want to be walking side by side with Jesus. Because where Jesus is, no waters can sweep over you. Where Jesus is, no storm can come over you. Where Jesus is, no fire can burn you. And that's where you want to be. Link below, donation link below. 
prayer link below. Until next time, God bless you and may the peace of Jesus be with you.